Welcome to Population Health, Big Data, Interoperability, and Analytics for Population Health. This is Lecture D. This component, Population Health, discusses the application of informatics and informatics methods in population health management. This unit, Big Data, Interoperability, and Analytics for Population Health, explains the challenges and opportunities of developing predictive analytics for population health. The objectives for this lecture are to describe methods and tools that are commonly used for population health analytics, analyze and critique a number of sample population health analytic results. Note that this unit does not explain the details of predictive modeling techniques. Please refer to the dedicated component on data analytics to learn more about predictive modeling and analytics in general. This lecture discusses the common tools used by population health analysts as well as common reports generated by population health risk stratification applications. This diagram shows the overall steps involved in developing analytics for population health management and risk stratification. As shown in Box 1, the first stage involves the merging of various data sets and developing a centralized or distributed population health data warehouse. The second step, depicted by Box 2, includes various processes to prepare the data for analysis, such as fixing data quality issues, deleting or imputing the missing data, and transforming the data to meet the assumptions of a given analytical approach. The next step contains the development of the modeling and data mining approaches. As depicted in Box 3, this step usually requires a base data set and an outcome data set that would collectively include the dependent and independent variables. As illustrated in Box 4, the next step contains the model's validation and evaluation process. In this phase, the analysts use various statistical and data mining concepts to measure how good the model is in differentiating the outcome variable and how reproducible it is when used on other data sets. As pictured in boxes 5 and 6, a critical step after an acceptable model is developed is to apply it within the context of a population health management workflow. As marked by Circle C, this lecture discusses the common tools used to develop population health predictive models. Other phases of the population health analytic process are discussed in other lectures. Many tools can be used to explore, visualize, and compare population health data. These tools include spreadsheets, visualization tools, and many other applications that help analysts to better understand the underlying population health data. There are also a number of tools to develop predictive models from population health data warehouses. These tools are usually either statistical packages or data mining programs. Sometimes programming languages are used by analysts to develop new and advanced methodologies not available in existing applications from scratch. A few specialized population health analytic tools have already developed multiple models to predict various outcomes in a given population. These tools usually group the data with proprietary grouping methods and then develop the parsimonious models based on the grouped variables. These tools usually create reports that list the outcome variables and risks of developing them for any levels of population denominators, ranging from the entire population to individual patients if desired. Database management and databases browsers are not covered in this lecture. Note that not all tools are discussed in this lecture. Please see the standalone data analytic component for additional details on tools used for healthcare analytics. Spreadsheet applications are probably the most common programs used to explore population health data although the size of large population health data sets often limits the use of such programs. There is a long list of applications that provide spreadsheet capabilities. Examples of open source spreadsheets include Apache OpenOffice Calc, LibreOffice Calc, NeoCalc, and Caligra Sheets. Examples of other spreadsheet applications include Microsoft Excel. There are also online spreadsheets that can be used to explore and share population health data in real time, 
such as Google Sheets and others. This figure shows a screenshot of the OpenOffice Calc application. The application has loaded a section of the sample dataset used throughout this unit's lectures. As shown, the dataset includes such data fields as age, gender, plan type, number of medications, number of diagnoses, and other independent variables that could potentially be used to predict outcomes, such as cost, hospitalizations, and readmissions. Statistical packages are commonly used to develop predictive models in population health analytics. Open source statistical packages include R, PSPP, EpiInfo, and others. Commercial packages include S, SAS, IBM SPSS, Stata, Minitab, JMP, Maple, MATLAB, WPS, and many others. Note that none of these statistical packages is specifically designed for population health analytics, but most of them can be easily adopted to develop predictive models for population health. This figure shows a screenshot of the RStudio application that is using the R environment to analyze a sample population dataset. As shown in the screenshot, RStudio provides a panel to enter specialized R code a panel that shows the outputs of the command line R environment, a panel that lists the data objects, and a panel that includes various items, such as plots and diagrams. Data mining applications can be used to find useful patterns in population health data. Although data mining applications can be used to find certain patterns, they are not often used to explain causal relationships. However, the line between statistical packages and data mining applications is becoming blurred, as most of these programs incorporate both overarching methods. Open source data mining applications include Weka, RapidMiner, Name, Orange, NLTK, and many others, including extensions to statistical packages such as R. Commercial applications include MATLAB, SAS, IBM SPSS, TIBCO, Spotfire, JMP, Tableau, Mathematica, Cognos, Bayesia, and others. This image depicts screenshots of the Weka data mining tool. The left screenshot shows the scatter plot of age versus log transformed future cost. The bottom screenshot shows the histogram of the log transformed future cost. This image depicts a screenshot of the RapidMiner data mining tool. The screenshot shows the scatter plot of age versus log transformed future cost by gender. A number of specialized population health analytic tools group the existing data into manageable and meaningful categories and then predict various outcomes for that population. These applications often use insurance claims data to generate the grouped concepts and have built-in predictive models that can be applied to predict the future outcomes. Due to the proprietary aspect of most of these applications, the grouping concepts and reports generated by these applications are often not interoperable with other systems. As of 2016, there are no open-source population health analytic applications. However, there are a number of algorithms developed by various federal agencies and researchers that can help group the patients into various risk scores. The Charleston Comorbidity Index, CCI, is one of them. Quote, the CCI is a method of categorizing comorbidities of patients based on International Classification of Diseases, ICD, diagnosis codes found in administrative data, such as hospital abstracts data. Each comorbidity category has an associated weight, from 1 to 6, based on the adjusted risk of mortality or resource use, and the sum of all the weights results in a single comorbidity score for a patient. A score of 0 indicates that no comorbidities were found. The higher the score, the more likely the predicted outcome will result in mortality or higher resource use." Unquote. There are R and SAS codes to calculate CCI based on claims data. There are a few highly specialized applications to predict various outcomes for population health. 
Some of these commercial tools include the Johns Hopkins Adjusted Clinical Groups, JHUACG, tool, 3M's Clinical Risk Grouping Software, CRGs, Ingenics Symmetry Episode Risk Groups, ERGs, Pharmacy Risk Groups, PRGs, and Verisk DXCG Intelligence Software. Note that most of these software applications have their own proprietary grouping concepts that help them to reduce the dimensions of population health data. Thus, these applications are frequently referred to as groupers. This table shows a list of the population health groupers, both commercial and academic. The groupers can reduce the dimensions of population health data by reducing the number of low-level concepts used for predictive modeling. This table lists a number of risk groupers. Note that not all groupers use all available data sources for grouping and predictive modeling. For example, the Diagnostic Risk Groups, DRGs, only use diagnoses data and are customized for inpatient settings. But the Adjusted Clinical Groups, ACGs, use a variety of data types, including demographics, diagnoses, medications, and even lab results. This diagram shows how a grouper, in this case the Johns Hopkins ACG, uses the underlying population health data to generate higher level concepts. For example, the Johns Hopkins ACG grouper generates grouped concepts such as ADGs, ACGs, and EDCs for ICD level diagnostic and demographic information. Note that the number of grouped concepts is considerably lower than the entire ICD codes. The ACG system also generates RxMGs for NDC-level medication data. The software then uses these aggregated group concepts for predictive modeling and eventually population stratification. This screenshot shows one of the views of the ACG system that has been generated after analyzing a large claims dataset. This view shows the differences in diagnoses grouping of a given population of a specific health system and the common diagnosis groups in the general population. Note that the ACG system uses various grouping methods, such as the EDC groups for diagnosis, to reduce the dimension of the population health data. The first column indicates that all groups are part of the same health system. The second and third columns list the EDC codes and the names, which are clinical groupings of diagnostic codes. For example, CAR-01 refers to cardiovascular signs and symptoms and includes a long list of ICD codes that relate to cardiovascular issues. The next column shows the number of patients in this health system who have this EDC. For example, there are seven patients with cardiovascular signs and symptoms in this health system. The next columns provide the ratio of a given EDC in the given population, its overall ratio in the general population, the standardized mortality ratio, and whether the EDC ratio difference between this population and the general population is significant or not. As shown in the table, the rate of cardiovascular signs and symptoms in this population is 19 observed cases per 1,000 cases while this ratio is 39.65 over 1,000 in the general population, which shows that this population has a lower risk of cardiovascular signs and symptoms compared to the general population. However, this is only true about cardiovascular signs and symptoms, and other conditions may have a higher rate than the general population. As an example, the rate of disorders of lipid metabolism is significantly higher in the population, 164.35 per 1,000, compared to the general population, which is 120.62 per 1,000. Note that there are more than 200 EDC codes, while only a few of them are listed in this screenshot. This is another screenshot of an ACG system report. This report lists the major conditions grouped by ADG concepts and the total number of patients in each of them. The average predicted resource use shows the likelihood that this group of patients may generate higher or lower utilization rates in the future. As shown, the overall average prediction rate for all cases is set at 1. 
However, other condition groups have other rates. For example, the predicted resource utilization rate for patients with chronic renal failure is 5.74 higher than the rest of the patients in this population. This figure shows a sample report by the ACG system. The report provides a summary of a health clinic's population. The patient count is 359, and the total cost of the patients for the current year is $2,834,419. The pharmacy cost has been around $300,000. The average age is 46 years. As noted, the overall current risk of this population is 1.09 higher than the general population when considering diagnosis and pharmacy data in addition to age and sex. The diagrams show the distribution of age and gender in this population compared to the general population. Most importantly, the ACG system has provided prospective risk scores for the entire population. For example, the overall total predicted cost for the next year is 1.16 higher than the average risk for the general population. ACG has also identified 10 high-risk patients who would most probably incur a total cost of $887,385, thus making them naturally slated for care coordination and case management activities. This figure shows the second page of the sample report by the ACG system. The report provides a summary of overall risk factors for a clinic's population. On the top, a diagram has divided the population into different utilization risk bands. As shown, the clinic's population has more moderate, high, and very high risk band members than the reference population. The pie chart shows the overall 12-month hospitalization risk distribution, in which most of the population has a less than 0.10 probability of hospitalization next year. A number of population risk factors are also listed next to the pie chart. This screenshot shows one of the views of the ACG system that has been generated after analyzing a large claims data set for a given population. This view shows the risk scores for individual patients. Each row lists a patient, their demographic information, total concurrent cost, and a number of predictive risk scores. This diagram shows how the results of commercial and academic risk stratification applications can be translated into actionable applications. For example, the population with the highest risk factor for a given outcome, such as utilization, can be assigned to closer case management, while the population with the lower risk factor can be assigned to more modest management methods. The population risk groups are depicted in the pyramid diagram on the left side while the potential matching management applications are listed on the right side of the diagram. Population health risk prediction software applications often generate comprehensive reports for each patient of a given population. These reports are often used to modify clinical and case management workflows to better serve the patients at risk. Indeed, case managers and care coordinators use these types of reports to manage their patient populations. For example, the Johns Hopkins ACG system provides the following patient-level information in its reports. A summary of prior costs for a given patient. Various scores to provide a measure for case complexity. Multiple predictive values for various concepts. Likelihood of hospitalization in the next 12 months. Utilization rates such as overall cost, outpatient visits, admissions, and readmissions to hospitals. Care Coordination Risk Scores Impact Conditions such as High, Moderate, and Low Impact Diagnostic Codes And finally, Department of Health and Human Services Hierarchical Condition Category, or HCC, Scores This screenshot shows a sample report by the ACG system for an individual patient. This section of the report provides a summary of the patient's overall demographics, prior cost, care complexity, predictive values, and likelihood of hospitalization. As shown, patient 1 is a 38-year-old male with a total cost of $24,690 and pharmacy cost of $14,515. 
this patient has been categorized in resource utilization band 3 out of 5. In terms of case complexity, the patient has one chronic condition and is on medications that contain six active ingredients. The patient is not identified as frail. For predictive values, the patient's probability to be high cost is 0.47, with a predicted cost range of $40,000 to $50,000. However, the patient's probability of being in high cost for pharmacy is 0.99, with more than $10,000 in pharmacy costs. And finally, the likelihood of hospitalization seems to be low, hovering around 0.01 to 0.04 for most of the measures. This figure shows the second page of the sample report by the ACG system for patient 1. This section of the report provides a summary of overall utilizations and care coordination counts. The utilization segment shows a total number of 11 outpatient visits. While none of the other utilization items was recorded for this patient in the current year. Also on the care coordination side, there are no significant numbers to mention. This figure shows the third page of the sample report by the ACG system for patient 1. This section of the report provides a summary of all diagnostic and pharmacy markers. As shown, patient 1 has one high-impact diagnosis, multiple sclerosis, as well as two moderate-impact and no low-impact diagnoses. Note that ACG system uses the internal grouping mechanism, EDC, instead of ICD codes to list the diagnoses. This section of the report also lists high, moderate, and low-impact pharmacy conditions. As shown, patient 1 has three high-impact pharmacy conditions, which suggests the cause of being high-risk for pharmacy cost. See the first page of the report in prior slides. And the overall emerging risk for this patient. As with diagnostics, ACG system uses an internal grouping concept, RxMG, for medications instead of NDC or Rx norm codes. This screenshot shows a sample report by the ACG system for an individual patient. This section of the report provides a summary of the patient's overall demographics, prior cost, care complexity, predictive values, and likelihood of hospitalization. As shown, patient 2 is a 55-year-old female with a total cost of $12,676 and pharmacy cost of $8,167. This patient is categorized in resource utilization band 3 out of 5. In terms of case complexity, the patient has one chronic condition and is on medications that contain 19 active ingredients. The patient is not identified as frail. For predictive values, the patient's probability to be high cost is 0.12, with a predicted cost range of $15,000 to $20,000. The patient's probability of being in high cost for pharmacy is 0.81, with an estimated $5,000 to $10,000 in pharmacy cost. And finally, the likelihood of hospitalization seems to be low, hovering around 0.01 to 0.08 for most of the measures. This figure shows the second page of the sample report by the ACG system for patient 2. This section of the report provides a summary of overall utilizations and care coordination counts. As shown, the utilization segment contains a total number of 28 outpatient visits, including the use of psychotherapy services, while none of the other utilization items was recorded for this patient in the current year. On the care coordination side, there seems to be some considerable activities. This figure shows the third page of the sample report by the ACG system for patient 2. This section of the report provides an additional summary of adherence markers for this patient, which was not included for patient 1's report. As shown, various markers for medication adherence are listed, including mean possession ratio and refill dates. See the next slide for an explanation of the very end section of this screenshot. This figure shows the fourth page of the sample report by the ACG system for patient 2. 
This section of the report provides a summary of all diagnostic and pharmacy markers. Note that a short part of this section is shown on the last slide. As shown, patient 2 has no high-impact diagnosis, but has six moderate-impact and one low-impact diagnoses. Note that the ACG system uses the internal grouping mechanism, EDC, instead of ICD codes to list the diagnoses. This section of the report also lists high, moderate, and low-impact pharmacy conditions. As shown, patient 2 has three high-impact, six moderate-impact, and four low-impact pharmacy conditions, which hints at the discordance in medications. As with diagnostics, ACG system uses an internal grouping concept, RXMG, for medications instead of NDC or RX norm codes. This screenshot shows a sample report by the ACG system for an individual patient. This section of the report provides a summary of the patient's overall demographics, prior cost, care complexity, predictive values, and likelihood of hospitalization. As shown, patient 3 is a 57-year-old male with a total cost of $67,177 and pharmacy cost of $2,343. This patient is categorized in Resource Utilization Band 5 out of 5. In terms of case complexity, the patient has six chronic conditions and is on medications that contain 22 active ingredients. The patient is not identified as frail. For predictive values, the patient's probability to be high cost is 0.77, with a predicted cost range of $50,000 to $75,000. However, the patient's probability of being in high cost for pharmacy is 0.03, with only $1,500 to $2,000 in pharmacy costs. And finally, the likelihood of hospitalization seems to be relatively high. For example, the probability of a hospital admission in the next 12 months is 0.52, and the possibility of a readmission is 0.20. These risk scores clearly indicate that this patient has a high risk of utilization and needs to be closely followed in order to improve his health outcomes. This figure shows the second page of the sample report by the ACG system for patient 3. This section of the report provides a summary of overall utilizations and care coordination counts. As shown, the utilization segment shows a total number of 50 outpatient visits, one ER visit, two inpatient stays that total nine days, and one major procedure in the current year. On the care coordination side, there seems to be considerable activity. This figure shows the third page of the sample report by the ACG system for patient 3. This section of the report provides a summary of all diagnostic and pharmacy markers. Note that a short part of this section is shown on the next slide. As shown, patient 3 has 2 high impact, 17 moderate impact, and 3 low impact diagnoses, which hint at the high probability of utilization next year. Note that the ACG system uses the internal grouping mechanism, EDC, instead of ICD codes to list the diagnoses. This section of the report also lists high, moderate, and low-impact pharmacy conditions. As shown, patient 3 has 6 high-impact, 5 moderate-impact, and 4 low-impact pharmacy conditions. As with diagnostics, ACG system uses an internal grouping concept, RXMG for medications instead of NDC or RX norm codes. This figure shows the fourth page of the sample report by the ACG system for patient 3. This slide provides the last section of the long summary of all diagnostic and pharmacy markers for this patient, which did not fit on the last slide. This concludes Lecture D of Big Data, Interoperability and Analytics for Population Health. This lecture discussed tools to explore the data, such as spreadsheets, statistical packages to analyze population health data, data mining applications to find significant patterns in the data, 
specialized tools to analyze population health data, and finally, how to read and understand common reports generated by population health analytical tools. Note that not all items were discussed in detail. Please see the standalone data analytic component for additional details on methods used for healthcare analytics.